Now we're gonna talk about cellular respiration. And cellular respiration is an idea or a concept that a lot of students have trouble with because they hear the word respiration and they automatically think about breathing because in our experience, respiration is breathing. Well, we're talking about cellular respiration and the only reason that word respiration is in there is because the process requires oxygen. So this is a process that happens at the cellular level. It occurs in the mitochondria and it's all about producing energy for the organism. And it does require oxygen, but it's not breathing. It's not that actual intake and exhalation. That's not what we're talking about here. So I'm going to explain this concept to you so that you'll have a better idea and you won't get confused just because that vocabulary term is in there. So cellular respiration, um, another absolutely critical function in the cells. This produces the energy for the organism and all organisms need energy to maintain life. So as people, we need energy, but plants need energy, um, other animals need energy. So this is a pretty important process. Now there are three stages of cellular respiration. All right, so the first one is called glycolysis. So that is indicated on this graphic right here. This is glycolysis and it takes a glucose molecule, you know that's a sugar molecule and our bodies they break down food into sugar molecules and then that sugar molecule is used in this process of cellular res respiration. So in the stage glycolysis that glucose molecule is broken down and what we end up with is we have two molecules of pyruvic acid and we have two ATPs that are generated, okay? And then the process goes into the next cycle, which is the Krebs cycle, all right? This is a continuous cycle, so that's why it's indicated by a circle. This is just constantly occurring here, and notice that it's in the mitochondria. In the background here, you'll see this mitochondria, Okay. Glycolysis was in the extracellular fluid outside of the mitochondria, but now we've gone into the mitochondria. The mitochondria has all of these folds in here, they're called cristae, and that increases the surface area, so it, it ensures that this reaction can happen a lot because organisms need a lot of energy generated. So we go through this Krebs cycle and there's some ATP generated but still not very much ATP. So we have just a couple of molecules created by the Krebs cycle. So then the next part is the electron transport chain um, and the oxidative phosphorylation. So those are kind of big vocabulary terms, but this electron transport chain is is where the majority of the ATP is produced. So a lot of times we'll get about 34 ATP molecules out of this electron transport chain. Um, what's happening here is that there's a concentration gradient developed with the hydrogen ions and as they move across uh, the membrane, energy is generated and it's stored in these ATP molecules which is basically the currency for the cell. ATP is considered the currency of the cell because it is stored energy that the cell can use when it needs it. So here's the cellular respiration process a little bit um, more detailed. What we have here is we have the glucose. All right, we're gonna perform glycolysis and this is outside of the mitochondria. It's in the cell, but still outside of the mitochondria. Glucose generates that pyruvate. So we have two pyruvate molecules and we have a couple of ATP molecules generated from glycolysis. Those go into the mitochondria. They go through the Krebs cycle so this TCA cycle right here is indicating the Krebs cycle. And then the electron transport chain, and they're showing that lots of ATP is generated here. Now, if there is no oxygen available, 
all right? So in the absence of oxygen, then these pyruvate molecules would go into a process that's called fermentation. So there would still be some energy generated, but not as much as when there's oxygen and it can go through the whole cycle. All right, so let's talk about the ATP molecule. This is an amazing little molecule, so it's absolutely essential. What we have here is we have um, adenosine, so that's where we get the A, and this T is for tri, and tri means three. Okay, so you see here the triphosphate, that's very simply three phosphate molecules, all right? So that's ATP. These bonds right here between the phosphates, that's where the energy is stored, okay? So there's this cycle where ATP goes to ADP and ADP goes back to ATP, and it's all about these phosphate molecules. Now, ADP, different kind of molecule, but it's still made of adenosine, that's the A. The D is for di, and di means two. So see here, we have two phosphate molecules, all right? So when there's only two phosphate molecules on this entire molecule, it's ADP. When, there, when there's one that's added, it's ATP. Now, when there's energy needed by the cell, the third molecule right here breaks off. That bond is broken, and when that bond is broken, then pow, the energy is released, okay? And once that bond is broken and the energy is released, you have an ADP molecule again, okay? And then ADP molecule goes back through this process of cellular respiration, and a phosphate molecule is added, and it becomes ATP again. All right, here's a little more information about fermentation, because fermentation is a rather important process to us. We get a lot of products from fermentation. So I've put a picture up here that shows some of the products that we get from fermentation. So, um, you know, those cottage cheese and yogurt, is from fermentation. Um, beer goes through a process of fermentation and cheeses. So these are all um, processes, food processes that don't involve oxygen. So again, what happens is the glucose comes in and the process starts and it goes through glycolysis. So this is showing the process of glycolysis. And at the end of this process, we have those two pyruvate molecules and some carbon dioxide, but there's no oxygen present. So it can't move into the Krebs cycle because the Krebs cycle has to have oxygen in order to perform. So because it can't go into that Krebs cycle, it's going to only produce this ethanol from those pyruvate molecules.